Greetings and welcome to the channel. My name is Ed Budd and today I'm comparing the three main shoes from the Nike Zoomfly series. So with the release of the Zoomfly 3, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to compare the three main shoes in the Nike Zoomfly series. Having ploughed a number of miles into these shoes over the course of the last year or so, I thought it'd be a great time to revisit them and compare the differences between the original version and the current version. So starting off with the upper, so the upper has changed quite considerably over the last three uh, versions of the shoe. As you can see from the original here, the Zoom Fly, I uh, got it in this kind of olive sort of colour. Mainly use this for 5k races actually, I've really enjoyed this one at that kind of distance. Which is quite different to a lot of other users out there, I know some people that picked up this shoe have really enjoyed it for half marathon distances and even longer, but myself, it's hit the spot for me around about 5k and I'll go into that a little bit later. So the original featured this kind of mesh. It's quite thin and quite breathable and the tongue, very thin kind of tongue, only held in place by this small tap here. A far more padded heel counter on the original version of the Zoom Fly. Now saying that's missing on the Flyknit version and the Zoom Fly 3. It's far more considerable. There appears to be a plastic piece in there which comes up to about halfway Actually, I'd say it's probably about two thirds of the way up the back of the heel. And there's some quite considerable padding there uh, coming all the way around the ankle area. They employed fly wires uh, across both sides of the shoe to help with lockdown. And this helped to provide the runner with stability and options really in terms of the lockdown. I found the mesh on the Zoom Fly original to be really durable and really breathable. And I had very few problems really amongst all sorts of different temperatures while using it. Used it in wet weather, used it in drier weather, warmer weather, and no real issues. I found it a very breathable shoe. Moving on to the Flyknit version, this has the almost chainmail style Flyknit. It's kind of strange in hand. It actually feels quite coarse to the touch, and that's the only material that's utilised within the whole of the upper. The actual tongue area is slightly different. It's more stretchy and elastic, but it is kind of one whole segment. There's no kind of visible stitching or changes in the material. It's literally just one kind of produced, manufactured segment. So this knit upper really did divide opinion. Some people really, really liked it. Some people did not. Uh, I'm one of the people that did like it. I found that it was very fitting. It was snug without being overly constrictive to the toes. I enjoyed it in the Vaporfly series as well, the fly knit version of that. Uh, really worked well for me. I found that the fly knit just gave just enough for my foot. A lot of people did find this shoe somewhat narrow in terms of the uh, upper too. It kind of felt that there wasn't enough room and their foot kind of spilled out over the edges of the midsole. I found that the fly knit did give after sort of a few miles of running. Um, I did about 240 miles in this shoe. I found that sock selection with this shoe was really, really important to get a good fit in terms of the upper. If you used a sock that was too thick or too thin, um, it really, really affected the fit that you achieved. So you had to spend a bit of time and figure out which was gonna be best for you to get the best fit for the Zoomfly Flyknit. Another thing I found personally was that getting the lacing pressure over the top of the forefoot was really, really key. Uh, otherwise, you were gonna get some heel slipping at the back. You didn't want to over tighten the laces either and that gave me a little bit of pain up on the top of the forefoot here. Um, other than that I had no real issues in this shoe. I ran some road races and also a race on sand and it, in fairness it worked very well. Well as well as a shoe like this can work on sand. I'm not entirely sure why I selected it but it worked nonetheless. I'll probably get flamed for that. You know, there'll probably be loads of people saying why you use this shoe on sand. Again, I use the shoe extensively in different temperatures. So warmer climbs and also some very cold days. As I mentioned that race on uh, sand on a beach. What I did find is though that moisture was retained quite heavily within this shoe. The initial section of that race was uh, on a beach. It was very wet, wet sand. And the Flyknit Upper kind of holds on to that water. It doesn't kind of expel it. So I found that I was kind of squelching around in the shoe for a considerable time after that. There was a sectional road. Some of it got out during the road section, but then it was back on the beach. So uh, a real heavy test there, I would suggest. So I'd suggest that using this shoe with the Flyknit in very wet conditions is not advisable. So the new version of the Zoom Fly, 
The Zoomfly 3 uses Vapor Weave as its upper. It's very odd. It's almost like this kind of strange plastic material. It reminds me a little bit of a tent or a uh, waterproof cagoule. Maybe Liam Gallagher could get a coat made out of this material. A vapor weave cagoule. There's no sunshine today. You wouldn't be saying that today. It's dreadful out there. Rain. It's like winter. It's like a winter's day out there. It's typical English weather today. Grey. It was rain. And to think I was complaining about the sun the other day. It's dreadful, isn't it? So this upper, the vapor weave, in hand, it, it kind of feels so strange. I remember just sort of touching it for a while when I first got the next percent. It's just really really odd. It seems like it's not going to work. You know, if you wrote it down on paper and gave that to somebody and said, look, this shoe is made of this, they'd, they'd just think you were crazy. But it, it does seem to work. It is extremely breathable. I'll give it that. I think the main key difference here, other than the actual material, is the construction inside. There's a lot more inside this shoe than the other two uh, iterations of the Zoom Fly. There's kind of this like mesh sock liner inside the shoe, which seems to provide a lot more structure to uh, the very top of the shoe. That mesh runs underneath the vapor weave um, to provide structure and a bit more strength to the upper. There are numerous vents within that mesh inside of the shoe that seem to be there to provide some extra breathability. So that mesh runs right the way around the foot, with the only exception being this kind of neoprene style tongue. There's no heel tab this time, so it's a little bit more difficult to get the shoe on initially, but it is very stretchy, this neoprene stuff. And once it's on, it kind of fits the foot very snugly. So on the couple of test runs I've been out in this one, we're gonna do another one actually, uh, shortly in the rain. I do really like running in the rain, uh, I like colder temperatures. But in the test runs up to now, I found that the shoe is very breathable and it does appear to vent water relatively quickly. To clean the shoes up a little bit before I use them for this video, um, they got pretty wet and literally just laying some kitchen towel seemed to absorb the water from the shoe very, very, very fast. Um, I was very, very impressed by that. And hopefully that same behavior will transmit into a running or race situation. Not that you can have somebody following you around with paper towel to dry your shoes off while you're racing. Certainly good signs of improved performance when used in wet conditions with the Zoom Fly 3. So moving on to the midsole and outsole. So this original version of the Zoom Fly used a Lunalon midsole and it's got a carbon infused nylon plate. So it's not quite the same as the carbon plate that's used in the uh, Zoom Fly Flyknit, the Zoom Fly 3 or the Vaporfly 4% and Next% percent. That aside, I don't think that's a bad thing. This shoe has a slightly different characteristic. It's a little bit more responsive, I found, than the uh, more densely packed React foam or the Zoom X foam. That React foam is extremely durable and the Zoom X is extremely bouncy. There's lots of energy return there. This one I found to be a little bit more responsive. So I really enjoyed using it on shorter races. I really found it gave me that sort of pop and that feeling of real inertia and speed. I don't know, it just worked for me. You know, certain things work for some people. For example, I like playing Jazzmaster and Jaguar guitars. I really like the kind of the feel of those. They fit to my body. Just the sounds that I need uh, are just there at my fingertips with that guitar. Rather than Les Pauls and things like that, they've just never worked for me. This shoe really worked well for me at lower distances. Gave me a really good firm ride with a real feeling of push off that I just don't get in the other Zoom Fly variants. The Zoom Fly Flyknit I found similar, but the React Foam is quite a different beast. It's much more dense and it does feel slightly heavier on foot. I found when I got this Flyknit version of the shoe that I had to go through a period of a customization really. Um, it did change my foot stride a little bit. And I found that again with the Zoom Fly 3 where I've kind of gone back to that type of shoe after running in some shoes without those carbon fiber plates. So midsole and outsole on this one, far denser. I found the feeling of push off to be not quite as pronounced as that in the Zoom Fly. That side, I love this shoe. I did an awful lot of miles in this shoe. Um, all sorts of different things. We've been through a lot together, this shoe and I. Lots of races, lots of training runs, tempo runs. I'm not going to retire it quite yet. I do want to do a bit more extensive kind of comparison on foot with this shoe and the Zoom Fly 3.
The ride in the Zoomfly 3 is again firm, I'd say it's more similar to the Zoomfly Flyknit and I'd say it will take a little bit of time to get used to in terms of the slightly decreased heel to toe drop. I found the shoe less forgiving on my far from perfect running gait. That said, some small changes to my cadence, my pace and a little adjustment to my back posture and I found I really began to enjoy running in this shoe. I'd say again, I don't declare to being some super elite runner. That's, that's not where I'm at, guys. I'm just a guy that enjoys running and enjoys trying out running shoes. So thank you for all your comments about my running gait. I'm quite happy. I rarely get injured. Um, recently, I had a little bit of trouble with my knee. That's disappeared. I really have no problems with my running gait. I spend an awful lot of time making sure I stretch, do a little bit of range of motion before my runs and do some stretching and some warm down afterwards. That seems to work for me and I'm just happy getting out there running, meeting new people and enjoying myself and enjoying being alive. I did pop back out for a brief run in the original version of the Zoom Fly and actually found the difference in weight quite noticeable. It might only be 20 grams per shoe, but I guess double that and you start to get a idea that this shoe is a fair bit lighter than the current version. I think 40 grams or 1.5 ounces is actually quite a lot in terms of when you consider this shoe is classed as a racing shoe. I think there's lots of other racing shoes out there, even ones with carbon plates now, that are perhaps better options than the Zoom Fly 3. You could even look at this, something like the Hoka Only Only Carbon X. It's got a lower drop, I think that's about a five millimeter drop. It's 15 grams or half an ounce lighter than the Zoom Fly 3. And I think that upper is going to be pretty durable and extremely breathable. So certainly one to consider. I'm going to flash up some stats on the screen for you here so you can see the major differences between the shoes and you can form your own opinions and conclusions based on that. So all in all are the changes to the Zoom Fly series a positive or a negative? Of course, it would be nice to see a drop in weight of this shoe uh, rather than a trend moving in the opposite direction. I think the upper is an improvement, although I have noted, certainly from some of the viewers, that there are some sizing issues with the Zoom Fly 3. It does seem to run a little long. I haven't really noticed that with my huge sort of kayak style boat feet, but certainly other users and other runners that have got this shoe early on have noted that it does run a little long. There are no doubt going to be some people with issues about this heel area. There is no heel counter here. It is very, we can, even the cat can hear that. You hear that? It's squeaking. It's okay. It's not a mouse. It's not a mouse. Some people are going to complain about this lack of heel counter. There is this overlay here to provide some structure, but it doesn't provide an awful lot of structure at all. I did prefer this shoe with thinner socks. When I use the Stance Tab Socks, uh, it really did not work for me. The thinner socks kind of work. I don't know what that says about my, my foot, but uh, thinner socks, get out of it. I don't think I'd really suggest going a half size smaller in this shoe. I think that would be a step too far. That's not a joke. I think the sense of drive and push off is there, um, but it's not quite as pronounced as previous versions of the shoe. That might be something to do with the drop. I would suggest that heel stability is still an issue with this shoe. When I did some measurements earlier on, I did in fact find that the heel area in this shoe is about a centimeter less in terms of width at its widest point. So anybody that's uh, a little worried about stability in the heel, uh, it could be a problem. Obviously, weight in this shoe has been increasing. It's probably to do to the React foam uh, in the midsole and there's more of it as you can see here in the forefoot and in the rear heel area of the shoe. Is it worth blasting out another 100 notes, 100 big ones, um, to get the Vaporfly next percent? I'd say try this shoe first and see how you get on with it. The next percent is, it's a completely different beast really. I mean, you could train in this shoe, it gives a approximation of what the next percent is like, but uh, I feel that they're very, very different creatures. As a racing shoe, perhaps up to a half marathon distance. This could work for you, but I feel that there are a numerous number of different alternatives out there now at slightly more attractive prices as well. 
I mean, you could race a marathon in this shoe, but I feel the dense nature of the outsole isn't really gonna do you any favors later on in the race. Okay, guys, that's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this comparison between the different versions of the Nike Zoomfly series running shoes. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications so that you know when I release some of these new videos for you. Please do comment below if you've worn any of these shoes and you've got some opinions on them. That's why the world's a great place. We can all have opinions. We can share those opinions and be open-minded. Hit like if you've enjoyed the video. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.